All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for joining our Tag Inspector webinar here today. We're going to be going over more of a marketer's guide to tag testing. We'll get into exactly what that means here in a minute. Uh, but to dive in, first a little bit of housekeeping just about Tag Inspector in general and your presenter. I'm sure obviously most of you are familiar with Tag Inspector as a tool. If not, Tag Inspector is a product of InfoTrust LLC. Um, it is a tool that will help you audit, test, validate, and then monitor all tags or pixels and data collection that's happening on your website. Um, it is a product, like I mentioned, of InfoTrust. On the InfoTrust side, we do work in the web analytics, tag management, and product development areas. Uh, over 2,000 sites supported and analyzed on an annual basis. A lot of training programs a year, um, including some of these different webinars and educational webinars that we offer. And then we have two offices, one here in the States, one also over in Dubai. Your presenter today, that is me. A uh, nice photo of me there in the corner. My name is Lucas. I work on the Tag Inspector side of the house. I do product management for Tag Inspector as well as consulting around tag management. So working a lot of people through the tag testing, tag policy, tag governance, um, auditing, all those different processes. So to get started with everything, one other little reminder. Um, I would like to have a little bit more of an interactive webinar here today. I will be going through and walking through you know, exactly how to be testing tags with a few different strategies. If you have a couple monitors or you have a couple windows that you can have open, feel free to do that. Uh, the things that I will be using as I walk through these different things, I'll be using Chrome as the internet browser and some of the dev tools in there, just a basic level. Also be using the Tag Explorer browser plugin, which is a free plugin that you can get on the Chrome store. It is developed internally here by us but it is available publicly on the Chrome as a Chrome extension. Just head over to the Chrome web store and search Tag Explorer. It'll be the first thing that comes up there. So I'll be walking through and using that. So if you do not have that installed, you know, feel free to go ahead and do that. And then I'll also be going through a scenario focused specifically on the Facebook tag, Facebook Pixel. We have a lot of different marketers, advertisers that are starting to use and implement that. And it's an easy way to showcase exactly how to use some different tools as you're testing and, and seeing what type of data and what different events are being captured. Uh, so one piece of that will be using the Facebook Pixel Helper, which is another free Chrome extension. So if you just go to the Chrome store, search Facebook Pixel Helper, or even just Google Facebook Pixel Helper, you'll easily be able to find that. So just a heads up, be using those two different things. If you want to go ahead and grab them, please do. And you can walk through some of the examples and everything that I give here shortly. So as far as the agenda today and what we'll be covering and going through, first, high level, just what are we talking about? <laughs> um, what are tags? How are they working? Why would you ever be testing them, especially if you're working more on the marketing on the analytics side? Uh, going into kind of extension of that, tags, pixels, how they work. Third piece, what you all came for, actual testing of tags, some different scenarios in which you might be in a position where it might be prudent or beneficial to test some different tags, some different tools that you can use, some different strategies. And then as you're in there looking at the tags and at the requests and at the data that's being captured, just some of the things to look for. Some of the things that some of the other teams internally might be looking at that it would be helpful for you to also have some of that information so you can start making some decisions and also be able to provide better guidance. So as opposed to just going to the development team and saying, hey, I'm working with this platform. I feel like I should be getting some analytics data from it. Is the tagging broken? Um, you can actually be able to go in there and say, hey, we have this implemented. I see tags and we're tracking, we're collecting information on XYZ interactions. One thing that our account rep has been telling us is that we can start doing dynamic retargeting uh, based upon 
this interaction. I noticed that we're collecting an event, so we're tracking it, but we're not collecting you know, maybe a product ID or something like that that you can then match to it. I would like to be able to implement that. It's going to help you significantly, one, being able to identify what's going on, two, where are the gaps, and three, getting those different things that you want done, done. Um, if you can get the, your development team or whoever's managing your tags 90% of the way there, and all they have to do is, yep, I can find that code, put it in there, boom. It's going to greatly, greatly expedite the process for you. So some different things to look for there. We'll walk through that example scenario. Like I mentioned, we'll just be looking at a Facebook pixel, Facebook tag, some of the events um, that can be collected there and what that looks like. And then at the end, we'll get into just a high-level summary and a little bit of a Q&A. As always, if you have questions, feel free to drop them into the questions pane. You should have like a go-to webinar pop-up sort of thing that's, uh, that's up. There should be a questions pane in there. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in there as I'm going along. I will circle back and go through all of those at the end. So getting into it, so what are we talking about when we're talking about tags? Uh, why is it important? Why would you possibly be testing them? So when it comes to the what and why, at a high, high level, what are we talking about? We're talking about you know, your websites and then the different things that are, are making it tick. So the purpose of your website at the very end of the day is to make money. So either you're selling stuff through the website, you have products, you have an e-commerce sites, or you're putting out amazing content so that people come to your site for a result of either they're subscribing and giving you money in order to be able to access that, access that amazing content, or you have a very large audience and you're able to then sell advertising. But at the end of the day, it's all about making money. So what sorts of things are we doing in the digital marketing and the digital advertising space in order to be able to maximize and uh, the monetization of the website? So different ways that you can go about uh, accomplishing that. You can either build a larger audience, you can get more people coming to the website, if it's an e-commerce site, you have more people coming there. Chances are, even if your conversion rates stay the same, if the volume increases, you're going to have an increase in volume of transactions, which is leading to higher revenue. The other thing you can do is start getting into and attracting a better audience. So it might be people specifically targeted or specifically interested in whatever it is that you're putting out there. So in the context of advertising, if you can have, you know, if it's your audience size isn't growing at all, but it's more of a niche, more people that are strongly engaged in that content, they have a strong interest in what it is that you're putting out. From an advertising standpoint, that inventory on your website becomes more valuable. From the e-commerce standpoint, if you can get people that are more apt to convert or more apt to purchase things, as you, you know, can prove from past data, Keeping, even keeping the audience size the same, you get people that are going to convert more frequently. Again, you're growing that bottom line. So how we do these different things and try to improve the effectiveness of the website is either through internal or external meeting, means. On the external side, that's where we're looking at advertising. That's where we're looking at marketing. So retargeting to different people. I mean, the conversion rate is so much higher if someone's already comes to your website and check something out and then um, and by check something out like looks at it or consumes that particular content they maybe don't purchase it today but they leave and then you can start hitting them with some retargeting campaigns be it display be it search a beat email on the advertising side of things being able to identify what your audience ideal audience looks like and start putting your ads specific to them in front of them on other websites. Um, on the internal side of things, you can start looking at performance. So speeding up the site, having better performance, having better user experience is going to increase that conversion rate as well. So we do all of these things and there's large investments around all of these different areas. And a lot of that investment goes into one people, but also tools, also different things that we're using on the website and different platforms. So 
that's where the magical marketing technology stack or site technology stack or just technology stack on the website comes in. So there's a massive, massive investment in a lot of these different tools and what we're using and how they mix together. Things such as from the marketing or analytics standpoint, uh, like I mentioned, advertising. So you might be using a DMP like Crux. Uh, you might be using web analytics software such as Google Analytics or a Core Metrics. Uh, if you're doing advertising on Facebook because you found that a, a large portion or subset of your audience is there, um, you will probably be using a Facebook pixel in order to be able to track the effectiveness of campaigns as well as to effectively build audiences to then target on Facebook. Everyone's obviously using AdWords because that's where the world goes to search. Things like Criteo. Um, and there are many, many, many other platforms out there that you could be using. Um, but the moral of the story is, on average, uh, a large e-commerce site is going to be using more than 30 different platforms. That number increases even more when it comes to publishers um, because of you know, a large publisher website is not uncommon to see 50 to 70 different types of advertising platforms on there in order to be able to effectively maximize the monetization of the inventory that they have and the advertising that they're doing. So all of these different platforms are being used in order to affect the bottom line and affect the amount of money that you're able to make from your website, which again is the ultimate goal. So how do all these different things work? And that's what it comes down to, and that's what we're talking about today. All of these different platforms, doesn't matter what it is, it's running on tags. Any data that's being collected for analytics or for conversion type information, using tags to be able to, to collect that information. Anything that's collecting information on your users, replacing cookies, using tags, using pixels in order to do those different things. So if you want to know if your Google Analytics is properly implemented or your IBM Core Metrics is properly implemented and collecting all the information that you're wanting it to, if you want to know if the reporting that you're pulling out of these different platforms and turning around and making decisions off of is reliable, at the most basic level, it comes down to how strong and how solid is the foundation of the tagging that you have on your website. So I hope that can shed a little bit of light on the importance, uh, on the importance of tags and why it really matters, even in the marketing context. And even if you're just working in some of these platforms and all you're focused on is the, you know, the, maybe the social side of things. So running ads on Facebook, it's extremely, extremely important to make sure that the tagging on your website is set up in the proper way in order to be able to make sure that the decisions you're making are in fact backed by the data that you think that is there. So if ever you think, you know, hey, there might be an issue or you're curious if something was uh, set up properly, that's where the testing, that's where the testing piece that we'll go through today comes from or really comes into play. So the second thing we'll look at here is tags and pixels. We went through why they're important, but what are they and exactly how do they work? Now, <laughs> forgive me, this is going to be a very, very high level overview, but I think from a marketing standpoint, it can help in understanding how they're working. Um, if there's any technical people on today, um, it's a basic overview, so don't get mad at me. Um, so what tags are and how they work. So tags or pixels are just little snippets of JavaScript um, that are written into your website. So into the source code of your website or potentially it might be wrapped up in some other JavaScript, such as a tag management system. Um, but the tag management system, which is what we're looking at here, this example is Google Tag Manager script. It is embedded in the source code of your website. It's just a... JavaScript snippet. So when your browser goes through and is reading that page and is executing all the different code in order to show visuals and show the content on your website, it's also then hitting these 
different snippets of JavaScript, which then execute. Now, when these bits of code execute, what they're doing, and this is just a, a visualization here. So on the left side, you have your website. Browser is going through, reading that code, executing those different tags, those pixels. And it's sending up what we call a request to the servers in the sky. So the magical cloud, it's sending these requests up there. And contained in those requests is either a, a literal request. So can I get this? And that's where things like content you know, come in. So it's just sending up a request to the server. It's saying, I need this photo. It's then giving it that photo and then it's returning that photo to the page to be able to be displayed. In the context of say an analytics tag, it's sending up a request that is containing all of the information that was able to be pulled down or that was you know configured within the analytics tag for it to be able to capture. So it might be capturing things like the actual page URL. Uh, the cookie ID for the user, so the user ID that's being used. Information about the page that they're on, information about products or content that is being viewed. All of those types of information that you then eventually see within your analytics reporting, that's being sent up by those different snippets and by those different tags as they're being executed, sent up to the sky. Now what happens uh, that server level is in the context of content or payloads, photos, videos, advertising. It's returning those things to the website to then be displayed. In the context of analytics, it's returning just a uh, small one by one clear pixel that to just say that, yep, we got it, we're good. So to summarize, from the website, those little snippets of code get executed. They send up information to servers elsewhere, which then take that request and then return something back to the page. This is how the entire ecosystem works. So when I'm talking about those different network requests and the, and the different requests that are being made from the page, we can see those. So we can see those within our browser and that's what any automated tool or those plugins, it just knows exactly what it's looking for, it's parsing that out, and then it's displaying the information in a more readable format. If you wanna see those raw requests, which we'll get into, we'll get into using this network tab of your browser for testing and, and troubleshooting different things. Um, but if you wanna see those, it's in your browser's development tools, just go up to the network, and you can see all of the different requests that are being sent on a page. Contained within those requests, like I was mentioning, and we'll, this example specifically is for Google Analytics, but we'll be working the same way in any other analytics platform, um, any other advertising platform that's collecting conversion information, that sort of thing. Uh, contained within that request is all of the values, variables, key value pairs, um, and data that's going back to that respective platform. So you can see there on the left is a raw request. Uh, it's going up to Google Dash Analytics, so Google Analytics servers, collect, and then contained within the query string of that request are all the values, variables, that then at processing, Google Analytics will use, process that information, and then spit out in reporting. You can also see that information, like you can see on the right there, parsed out. So it just has the raw query string parameter with the attached value or, or what's being populated for that variable that's going up. So I'll take a step back here. So with the, this type of information, like I mentioned, that's what any tool is using in order to show you that information or troubleshoot for you. And this is what we can then use in real time on a page in order to be able to troubleshoot in order to to be able to test what's going on. So even in you know the marketer's role, even in um, an analyst role, if you wanna see if something's working, we can use this same information, now that we understand how it works, in order to be able to see, is it working, is it not working, what's actually being collected. So that's what we'll get into now. 
Um, the first thing that we'll go through here is a few different scenarios. So when it might make sense for you, know, you in a marketing or in an analytics role to actually hop in and figure this, you know, figure this out, do this kind of testing. Also, we'll go through a few different tools that would be helpful and are helpful, extremely helpful in order to be able to use. And then finally, we'll go through some of those different keys uh, for things to look for as you're going through and, and testing, uh, be it with a plugin or be it with the browser, be it with an automated tool. Uh, and then finally, like I mentioned after that, we'll go through an actual example. In terms of scenarios, so when does it make sense for someone not in a purely development role to go in and start testing tags? It might be, well, I guess first, obviously, implementation and QA, obviously, it makes sense to test in those scenarios. But that's not in the marketing realm, typically, or not in the analytics realm, typically. It's more on the development side of things, your marketing operations, that sort of thing. As a marketer or an analyst, the questions that always come up <laughs> is, as you're starting to evaluate different tools, you're starting to look at effectiveness of campaigns through a particular platform, you start asking questions such as, what more could I be getting out of this platform? You know, I'm, I'm using Facebook. I know I have the Facebook pixel implemented on my website. I can do some really high level remarketing campaigns based upon the audiences I'm able to, to build, but it's still just very general campaigns. Could I target based upon an individual product? So people that look at a product or add a product to a cart, could I make an audience based solely around that? Um, or it might be something like if you're looking in your analytics platform, I'm really curious if users are following this, this flow. Do I even have that click or a view on that creative or that promo? Is that even tracked? Questions such as that can lead you to thinking about, well, in order to know if it's even available to me or even to know if it's possible, first it has to be tracked and it needs to have tags listening for and recording all of that type of information. Um, a few other things get into data quality. So you pull a report. You start looking at the report. You start looking at some of the insights that you're, you're pulling, and it just doesn't feel right. Obviously, we never want to purely go off of gut feelings. But if you have a, an intuition or something looks awry based of, as compared to previous reporting that you've done, and there's no new campaign or no nothing that would really jumps out to be able to explain that, you start thinking, is this accurate? Are the reports that I'm putting together and the things that I'm making decisions off of, is it actually accurate? Is the data complete? Is the data clean? At that point, it makes sense. If it's just one thing, hey, my, my transactions look way, way, way down this week. What's going on? You know, there's no other fluctuations. My overall traffic looks fine. What's going on? Well, are transactions still being tracked? And for things like that, you can start going in and looking at the tags. Uh, finally, that classic, classic question of did my request, I, I, we started paying for this platform three weeks ago or a month ago. And in order to start targeting people through here or actually seeing some sort of return or measuring the effectiveness of this tool, it needs to be implemented on the website. <laughs> Did that request to get it set up and implemented actually get completed? As opposed to having to go through other channels, we can go directly to the source. We can look at the website. We can see are the tags set up? Is the data being collected? Is the data accurate? Is this actually working? And for that, we can, we can actually start testing. So those are the scenarios that you might find yourself in where it would make sense to manually, manually test. And there might be scenarios that you're in now, which is why you're wanting to learn. In terms of different tools, so how we can go about easily testing tags. Uh, first, we can do a manual process. So we can look at the network requests. This is the most flexible means of doing it. Um, it's also the most direct, but it, all, it does require a little bit of additional knowledge if you're starting to dig into variables, values, things like that. You just need to know what they map to. 
I'll show you how that works. This is actually my personal favorite way of doing it if I'm manually checking, but pros and cons to everything. The second way is with plugins. You can use things like I mentioned our Tag Explorer plugin. Uh, Ghostry is another popular plugin that is sometimes used. Also platform specific plugins. Google, for example, has the Google Tag Assistant, which is extremely helpful for AdWords conversion, AdWords remarketing, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, double click, any of their different tools. Facebook has their Facebook Pixel Helper. I know Criteo also has a plugin. A lot of these more the more popular platforms will have plugins that they have developed that are free, that are available. You can go out there, you can use those to check on a page by page basis. So that's one of the downfalls, I guess, of, of doing it in manual or, or with a plugin. It is page by page, it is manual, it does take some time. But if you're just looking at one or two different things, you know, it, it might make sense to go about it in, in this particular way. Finally, you can use different types of automated tools. So obviously our tool, Tag Inspector, is what I would always recommend. Uh, but some of the other tools out there, some of our uh, competitors, I guess, in the space, ObservePoint, HubScan, uh, and Ghostry also, I believe, does some scanning sorts of things as well. So other tools out there, there are ways of automating the process. You can automate validation. You can automate tag auditing, that whole nine, um, if you want to go that route as well. So. In terms of the tools, and I'm just going to quickly go through these screenshots because we're actually going to hop in and just do it. Um, these screenshots are more so here. So as more people inevitably hear about this great webinar, you can share the deck and they can have a visual. So uh, this is what the network tab would look like in your browser, which we'll get into. This is a screenshot with our Tag Explorer plugin, which is just going to show you what tags are firing and then it can be really helpful also, it's supplemented with the network tab. This is a screenshot of our of the Google Tag Assistant plugin. Just, you know, as an example, it'll show you all the different Google platforms that are loading. Green's good, red's bad. It'll give you some suggestions as to what could be improved as well if there are issues. Um, and then these are a few screenshots from Tag Inspector. These are scan reports. Uh, where we can show you across an entire website, so this scan over 3,000 pages, how many pages are is each platform on, uh, how many pages in total were scanned on the site, and then how is each tag being loaded? Is it being loaded from a page through something else, piggybacking off of another third party, that sort of thing. So now we know, I guess, why we'd be potentially testing, we know how, we can go about doing it. Uh, the final thing here, as we go over just the overview, things to look for. So number one is the tag executing. Uh, if the tag's not executing, if the tag's not firing, if that code isn't being read and isn't executing properly or maybe airing out, that's the end of the story. <laughs> um, nothing can actually happen. No request is gonna be sent. No data is gonna be collected. No function is going to be completed. So number one is the tag firing. That's most basic, also in, in many ways, most important. Number two is the your request actually completed. So the code executes, we see a request going up. Do we see it being completed? And I'll show you what that looks like. You're gonna wanna look for, um, for that within in the, in the network. You don't want it being just purely redirected. You don't want it airing out, which that is that return that you're going to get from you know the cloud the server that it is saying yep got it we're good number three what data is being collected you know it's not enough so you just have adobe analytics set up on your site yes you're going to get a lot of great basic page view page information um information about traffic but you're not going to get that more in depth you know what is the click stream look like or what products, what product IDs, what are the prices of the different products that are being looked at? Some more contextual information about, about content. Who's the author? What label does this have? Uh, where's traffic coming from? That sort of thing. So we see things being executed. We see the request being completed. Uh, also, 
third, what data is being collected? Is it actually useful? Is it everything that I need? Number four extends a little bit further uh, in what interactions are being tracked. Not just, yep, this is here, this is loading on this page, but is it actually executing when I click this button, when I add this product to the cart, or when I initiate checkout? All of those different interactions that might play a part in your user journey or are something that you're wanting to test. How can we optimize this? How many people are actually doing this? If you have those events set up, uh, that's obviously something that you want to make sure is being tracked, especially if it's an initiative. So you're looking for primarily, and you can get into other things around performance and, and uh, really dive into the hole, but at a high level, you're looking for is the code actually executing, is the request being completed as expected, what data is being collected, and then what interactions are actually being tracked. So let's do it. So I'm gonna walk through here, uh, keeping those different things in mind. A few different, no, we'll just walk through websites. So let's go to an e-commerce website, uh, we'll say Gap, gap.com. So any website that you go to, and like I mentioned before, um, we'll be using, I'll be using Chrome, and then, oh, thanks. I'll be using Chrome, I'll be using our Tag Explorer plugin, and then I will also be using uh, that Facebook Pixel Helper. Facebook Pixel Helper a little bit more in the next example, uh, but if you have those, great. Please walk, you know, play along with me. If you don't, feel free to, to quickly go grab them and install them and then walk through this with me or just sit back and enjoy. So the first thing that I had mentioned was manually testing. So in order to be able to manually test, what we're gonna need to look at is the network tab. We need to see the network requests that are being sent up from all the different tags and we need to see it uh, in our browser. So in order to be able to access that information, I'm gonna right click anywhere on a page and I'm gonna go to inspect. Now that is going to pull up my developer console. So my developer tools within Chrome. You're gonna see a lot of different like column headers up here, elements, console, sources, network. For the purpose of testing tags specifically, and looking at those requests, I'm gonna click on the network. Now you're probably not gonna have anything here to be expected. What we're gonna to need to do is refresh or reload the page so that all of these network requests that happen on this page are then recorded and show up here. So we can see here, you know, big e-commerce site, a lot of, lot of requests. Uh, um, we're approaching 200 in total. So a ton, a ton of different requests. And this is what scares people away. This is what scares people away from, from testing or really digging into this. We see all these and it's like, where in the heck do I start? Uh, you know, what, what analytics platform is being used? How can I even find those different things? So that's where I like to use um, our Tag Explorer plugin. So what many of these plugins will do, um, aside from simply looking at or telling you green's good, red's bad, um, for their specific platform, there are plugins like our Tag Explorer out there that will just collect all these different network requests and we'll show you in English, clear, plain English, um, exactly what platforms are on the site. So for here, if I want to troubleshoot the, <coughs> the analytics, I see, okay, Adobe Site Catalyst is being used. I can click on that tag, and then I can see what raw requests are being classified as Adobe Site Catalyst. So this is the information that we'll need to then take over here into the network and find those requests that we're looking for. So. Uh, I see that the domain of the request, metrics.gap.com. So what I'm going to do is in my network tab where I have all these, I'm going to filter simply by metrics.gap. So here I can see three different Adobe Site Catalyst or Adobe Analytics requests were sent up. I can click into an individual one of these and I can see the full request URL as well as the query string parameters. So these are those key value pairs and the data that was being collected. So number one, we're wanting to see, is this tag executing? If I'm troubleshooting Adobe Analytics, yes. Adobe Analytics is on the page, it is firing. Number two, is this tag, is the request being completed? 
is it is it successful? I can see here status code 200. Okay, yep, it is. It got sent up and back to the page. Adobe is telling me, yes, we're good to go. Number three, what data has been collected? So that's where if I click into each of these individual requests, I can see here in the headers, I can scroll down, I can see query string parameters, and I can see everything parsed out. You know, your variable here, your value over here. So if I'm, you know, for the purpose of my troubleshooting, I want to see if EBAR22 is actually being collected on a page. Boom. I come in here, I see in the request, bar 20 b 22 that corresponds to ebar 22 i can see that it is being collected number four what different types of interactions so this would be uh one step further so say i mean on a home page probably not too much as far as click events but uh are impressions being tracked so as i scroll down this page are hits being sent up to adobe analytics I can see here as I began to scroll, yes, more hits are being sent. Yes, they're executing. Uh, yes, they are successful. So I scroll down here. Is it actually because I'm scroll scrolling? Is it my scroll tracking that's working? I look in the data that's being collected right here, homepage scroll tracking, reached 75. I reached 75% of the way down the page. Boom. I know that my scroll tracking is working. I know that Adobe Analytics is collecting these different pieces of information. Yep, working, we're good to go. My reporting for impression tracking and scrolling on the homepage is accurate. So that's number one. Number two, uh, say I am looking at a specific product um, and I wanna make sure that I want to look at pants. Um, I want to make sure that the data that I want to be using in my reporting is actually there. Um, and maybe say, as opposed to that first example was for, for Adobe Analytics, let's look at, let's see, what do they have? AdWords, any AdWords? Yep, AdWords conversion. Or no, let's do AdWords remarketing. So with the AdWords remarketing tag, with the AdWords remarketing tag, one of the things you're able to do within the remarketing or within the AdWords platform is remarket dynamically based upon the individual products that people are viewing. So for me, I've come to the site. I'm looking at the classic stretch fit khakis. I have my network open. I'm thinking that um, you know I work in the search area. I want to know you know I'm creating remarketing lists. How granular can I potentially get with these audiences? Well, I come in here. I look at the pages. I see yep, AdWords is firing. Uh, my remarketing tag is firing. I can come in here. I can look. I can then search or filter in the network based upon that. And I can start looking at these requests that were being sent. Do I have CDC ID, value, scripts? Is my product ID, is it being actually sent up here? Um, and looking at these requests, it does not look to be. So I have the conversion label, the value, there's no value, I guess, on here. Um, and then, yeah, one of these might be my, my uh, product ID. So I can see, okay, yes, the remarketing tag is executing. Uh, it is being completed. As far as data goes, I would have to have a better understanding of what the product IDs would look like. But on the analytics side, if you're always working in that, um, you would know those different things. So I would be able to tell is when a product is viewed is the product information being sent up to AdWords specifically, so that then I know in AdWords, I can go in there, start creating audiences, um, as long as it's supported, for targeting that specific, specific product. As far as using plugins, um, I will get back to that um, with our final example, and then also automated tools. As many of you know, 
uh, tools such as Tag Inspector. There's a few different ways that you can go in and actually collect that information. You can run scans, which is going to go through, scan every single page of the site so you can see this type of information at a massive, massive scale uh, for every single page, every single tag across the entire site. And you're saying what's there, where it is, how it's loading, um, as well as creating some different validation rules using things like the Tag Inspector real-time a module where you can define, you know, you want to test, is this particular data point being collected on this page or on this interaction? Uh, and automated tools can test that constantly and then kick out, you know, did it pass? Did it fail? Is it working? What percentage of the time? Under what conditions is it not? So the final thing I want to get into here um, is the example scenario. So I know we went through, we just looked, gone through how these different tags work, what the data looks like, different ways of testing what to look for. So specific scenario that I think might ring true um, or be relevant to a number of the people here on this call. So just to explain what the scenario looks like, the scenario that I'm looking at is, say you're a marketing manager, you're running ads on Facebook. Obviously, you need to see the effectiveness of campaigns in order to be able to optimize. So I need to know what creative, what products, uh, what audience is actually dri driving the most conversions, the most revenue, the most return on the investment we're making in Facebook ads. In order to be able to effectively do that, specifically for all that information that I'm doing within Facebook, I'm going to drop a Facebook pixel on my site. Now, that's going to help me track. Now, I also need to sufficiently build audiences to target, and I want those audiences to be able to be as granular as possible. I get a lot of traffic. I have a lot of different products. I want to make sure that on Facebook, I'm putting the right product in front of the right individual. So that's a situation that you're, you're looking at and what it is exactly that you're trying to accomplish. Now, you've dropped the Facebook pixel on your site. It's collecting information. You know it's building a cookie pool. You can see your audience growing in there. You're seeing some conversion events um, and some different traffic and how many people are being driven, click-through rates, all that good information. You're seeing that in reporting, but you don't feel like the data in the reporting is quite complete. You're wondering, why can I not build some of these more granular segments? Why can't I target based upon products that are certain users are, are seeing? Why can't I do these things? So it becomes apparent, you know, well, is this actually working? So a couple ways you could go about addressing this. You could either start asking around, um, you know, the technical team, hey, is this, uh, what's being collected here? You can start asking, you know, maybe your Facebook account team is, why is this not happening? And one, it's going to probably take a while to get, get a response. And two, even the response that you get is going to be relatively vague and there's no, not going to be any action items. I mean, it might say like, you know, Facebook account team might come back to you and say, nope, you're not collecting that information. You need to implement the events for that and be collecting these data points. Well, it still takes another next step. You have to go find the implementation docs or you just turn around to the development team and say, hey, I need these events and this information on these interactions. Then they have to turn around and find the implementation. It takes time. It's not efficient um, and it's frustrating. So what's easier is if, you know, me in this scenario is the marketing manager, I can go and I know what I want to track. I want Facebook to be firing and collecting product information on all product pages. So I know what I want to test. I know what I want to see there. And now I have the tools and I have the knowledge to, to go do it. So how I'm going to go about this, I'm going to go to my website. <clears throat> I am going to, I can use the network. I can use these plugins. Um, I can use an automated tool. For this particular purpose, I would highly, highly, highly recommend just going there and, and using the tools available to you. So like I mentioned before, Facebook plugin, uh, Facebook Pixel Helper is the name. Install it in your browser. It's great. Um, any page that you go to when it's enabled, 
it's going to show you how many Facebook requests or how many uh, pixel fires were sent. And then you can click into it <clears throat> and see the specifics for each. So something like on the home page, as soon as it's complete running, I would be able to see here in the Facebook pixel helper one, I can come in here. I see, okay, this particular tag with this pixel ID is firing. It's firing a page view event. It'll show me the full URL that's called. I don't really care about that. It'll show me the amount of load time that, that it took as well as location. Great information. Now, me, marketing manager, I want to know on these product pages, is this information being collected? I need to know, is a product ID being collected so I can then match it to my um, my product catalog that I would input into Business Manager. So I'm going to go to a product page. I'm going to let that load. And I'm going to look in my Facebook Pixel Helper. I see here two. There's two separate tag requests that were sent by this Facebook tag. One, a page view, and also a view content, which is an event. So I can click on that view content. I can see content type, product group, content IDs, the individual ID. So yes, I know now that on my product pages, Facebook Pixel is firing, and it is sending up the product IDs. So I can then match that. I know that's going to be available to me within reporting. If this wasn't there, if I didn't have a view content event, all I had was a page view, I didn't see product IDs or content IDs being sent up, hey, it needs to be implemented. I don't have access to this information. So you now immediately know, yes, this works, this doesn't work. You also know what needs to be remediated. Now I can go to my development team and say, hey, this is implemented, great, perfect. Now I can go to my Facebook team. Hey, this is implemented. Why can't I do this? Well, it's a configuration on, on you know, in the account. Great. But at least we've gotten somewhere and we've gotten to the end result of I need to do this in order to be able to accomplish my goal. Now, the same scenario plays out all the time um, across many, many different sites every single day, across different platforms, the whole time. Um, <laughs> we can use these different tools that I have gone through today in order to be able to accomplish, um, accomplish exactly what, what we just did. So I hope that was helpful. Um, just to summarize, so high level, why is it important? Why are tags important? Because they're the building block, they're the foundation of everything that you're doing from a marketing, from an advertising standpoint on your website. Data that's being collected, reporting that you're looking at, um, any sort of future predictive models that you're uh, trying to create based upon what's going on right now or what has happened in the past is all predicated on the data that you're able to collect. It's that old adage of garbage in, garbage out. We need to make sure that we have complete accurate data going in, which is dependent upon solid tag architecture and solid tag implementation. So knowing this, knowing how these tags work, knowing what to look for, knowing how to test at you know a very uh, just like a basic level is going to give you additional tools in the toolbox to be able to be a better marketer, be a better analyst. Um, so I hope this has been helpful. Um, at this point, I will turn it over to any questions that anyone may have. Okay, so two questions initially. One, can we integrate Tag Explorer in Selenium Automation Framework? Unfortunately, no. Now, what I would recommend is just using the Tag Inspector crawler. <laughs> um, so the Tag Inspector, Tag Explorer, obviously plug in. Tag Explorer is going to allow you to, on any page you go to, see what tags have fired. If you use an automated tool, such as the Tag Inspector Scan, that's going to crawl for you, essentially doing what Selenium is doing, uh, loading each page, executing those tags, capturing the requests, and then it will be able to show you across every single page that was scanned 
what tags are there, how they're loading, where they are. So that's really what I would I would recommend there as a solution to that, as opposed to trying to configure you know a plugin within a Selenium automation framework and, and going that route. Other people have already you know done it for you essentially. Uh, the second question is: Is the Tag Explorer extension available on other browsers? Unfortunately, not. Right now, it's just available in Chrome. Um, so yeah. Any other questions? Doesn't look like it, um, which is fine. If anyone has any questions that's come out of this, or um, we'll be sending out the deck here probably tomorrow, um, and also a recording. So. If you missed anything, obviously feel back, feel free to go back through. If you have any questions that come up in the future around tags, testing, automation, anything, uh, always feel free to reach out to us. More than happy to help, more than happy to hop on a call with anybody and walk through you know, whatever the situation is. If we can help you, great. If not, at the very least, we should be able to point you in the direction of somewhere that can. So thank you all very, very much for joining here today. We'll have another more product-centered training webinar um, in a couple weeks. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks again for joining and happy scanning.